Now Chris Daniels asked us to relate our favourite memory in terms of water and one that springs to mind for me is dancing around under the overflow from my grandfather's rainwater tank in the big, big rains in the mid 70s out on his property in Western Queensland and the joy that that brought to the community. Now my area of work is around the changes in, in uh, rainfall patterns and, and weather patterns on a month to month, season to season and year to year and, and decade to decade basis. One of the most concerning things for me is that we are seeing indications that human activity from climate change is having impacts on our weather patterns, essentially creating stronger high pressure systems in southern, southern Australia, pushing cold frontal systems further south and having substantial impacts already on water current coming down the Murray River system. Now this sort of uh, increase is, is very likely to continue into the future decades and obviously has big implications for rainfall patterns and water availability in Adelaide. So um, I guess one of the things I would like to, point, like to highlight is that we really need to change our thinking from a linear perspective in terms of bringing water in, in one end and from their dams and catchments and out the other and, and change more to a closed cycle um, system, so more, more reflecting natural, um, natural systems. And, um, and that, uh, I think, is our best way forward to find ways to deal with, with our water issues in, in coming decades. Thank you. I work as SA Water's principal climate change advisor, but my first real uh, important experience with water was when the Glen Osmond Primary School uh, took us around as, as five-year-olds to all of the water reservoirs around the Mount Lofty Ranges, or at least four of them. And from that point onwards, I had this wonderful awareness of where the water comes from, from the tap, before it gets to the tap. Um, I, my dad, a few years later, showed me the Mount of Adelaide pipeline, and uh, I guess that introduced me to the area of, of water management. Um, at SA Water, we're facing climate change, climate variability, um, green, potential greenhouse costs as part of our business every day. So it was a welcome opportunity um, to be asked to bring together some of the, the thinking in the climate change and water management chapter. In looking at this chapter, we felt that we had to set the context of climate change and water for Adelaide, and that story goes back hundreds of millions of years. So with um, Jim Ki Ling's help, we actually went back to 720 million years ago when we had a climate of the Earth being completely covered in snow and ice. We go forward through different uh, periods in Earth's history uh, when the Earth was at the equator and is still covered in ice sheets, back to um, 20 million years ago as Australia moved northwards from Antarctica and the climate began to change. Peter Gell helped us understand climate variability in the more recent times, um, particularly around the cycles, the uh, Milankovitch cycles or cycles of activity of the Earth's orbit around the sun, the tilt, the wobble of the Earth and those types of things that have an influence across thousands of years. Bringing forward the story even closer to post-European settlement of the country, we can see Adelaide's climate change or climate as part of a land of drought and flooding rains. But for Adelaide, we've got this exception of the Mount Lofty Ranges, which is a green crescent bringing water down uh, to our catchments. And the, and the story of water for Adelaide as a city really starts there on how we captured water from the Mount Lofty Ranges initially, and the authors go through that how we then exceeded the supply from the Mount Lofty Ranges and supplemented our water supplies from the River Murray. And then we introduced this concept of human-caused climate change and what does that mean for us going forward. Uh, the climate scientists say that we're already experiencing impacts from roughly about three quarters of a degree of climate change. And they also caution very strongly that moving forward on what I call the, the fossil intensive pathway or the IPCC call the A1FI pathway, that if we continue in that direction, we'll be causing more serious consequences for our water supplies and climate change. And it puts us in a, a delicate question, how do we adapt to this climate change that we need to adapt to and how do we manage our greenhouse gas emissions so that we're not making things worse? And it becomes a question of uh, diversity of supplies whilst also adapting to a, a low carbon economy and looking at challenges for the future. We, there's sections on 
groundwater supplies, on the impacts of salinity and changing um, algal blooms and pathogens and all of those things that affect our water going forward. We finished on this sort of discussion about economics. Do we wait for a carbon price signal from the federal government or do we integrate this climate mitigation action in our activities? And I guess the chapter doesn't answer all of the questions, but it certainly raises these important issues for Adelaide as a city. And Adelaide has a role in adapting to climate change, reducing its emissions and supporting the necessary research along the way. Thank you. I'm Craig Simmons, and one of my earliest memories um, of water goes back to um, when I was really a child. And I think that, um, like most Australians, that um, water is really just a, um, a really important part of our life. Um, and it brings such a huge um, refreshing and spiritual dimension to our life in many ways. And so like playing at the beach, um, saline water, um, or um, having barbecues and swimming in the River Murray with family and friends, really uh, water has always been a really important part of, of things that I do. And um, I continue, continue to enjoy it um, today. Although um, the work that I do is now focused on groundwater, which is a little bit um, less visible for the most part, and um, obviously a lot uh, more difficult to swim in and play with. But um, the book chapter that we wrote um, on groundwater really focuses on what we believe is, for a large part, a resource that's been um, understated and largely f forgotten, certainly um, as far as managing water resources um, are concerned and we know that the use of groundwater really predates um, biblical times. We've been using it as a civilization on the planet for, for thousands of years um, but learning how to un understand groundwater from a scientific and technical point of view as well as managing groundwater as part of a holistic and integrated water resource um, really is quite modern and contemporary in terms of um, the current challenges that we face um, in South Australia, Australia and internationally uh, with groundwater as a particular um, and connected part of the hydrologic cycle. So um, the book chapter uh, looks at the importance of groundwater to South Australia. Um, many of us realise that groundwater is critical in so many ways to this state. Um, it supplies over 65% of the water supply um, for our irrigation um, usage. Um, it, it represents a major source of water for mining um, and other uh, agricultural um, industries. Um, more locally in the Adelaide metropolitan area we use groundwater um, from the deeper tertiary aquifers for um, a whole range of industries, um, watering ovals, recreational sports fields, um, providing water for Cooper's Brewery, Coca-Cola, um, soft drink supplies and our water um, for um, spring water comes largely from the Piccadilly Valley and the Mount Lofty Ranges so there's a whole range of usages. Um, there are over 2,600 um, low yielding backyard bores that we estimate currently extract groundwater from the surface um, quaternary aquifer, although we suspect that there are many more that we don't know about. Groundwater really represents an important component of the total water system because as we know with drying climate, reduced rainfall and um, and so on, the total water availability in surface water is becoming increasingly scarce and we've seen already that there is an increasing trend um, towards using groundwater as a water supply to supplement surface water. And so increasing our understanding of the resource and better understanding how to conjunctively use groundwater um, together with surface water will be a critical component of how we move forward with groundwater management and protection in South Australia.